Don't you wish you could just focus on one microservice instead of having to drag in the whole set of microservices and all of those related dependencies in Kubernetes? Well, it turns out you can. So join me and Nick Greenfield on this episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. Hey everyone, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today I'm joined by Nick Greenfield, who is a program manager on the Bridge to Kubernetes team. Welcome, Nick. Hey, hey Leslie, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Yeah, nice to be here. It's a very smoky day out, but <laughs> enough about that. The cool thing is that I hear there's this new feature available as part of Kubernetes called Bridge to Kubernetes. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Sure. Uh, so Bridge to Kubernetes is uh, an iterative development tool for developers that are authoring microservice applications um, that target Kubernetes. Um, it's offered as a client experience in both Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code uh, through extensions that you can pick up in the marketplace. So what are some of the existing approaches that are kind of similar to Bridge to Kubernetes that can help address that issue? Uh, that's a good segue to uh, so this next uh, slide that I have here. Um, so there's a lot of different tools and methods for solving these kind of challenges where you're working on a single microservice in the context of a larger application. Um, and we've kind of categorized all those different methods and tools into three main buckets. Uh, there's the local approach, the remote approach, and then the hybrid approach. Um, so that's these columns that I'm showing here. And the rows are key characteristics that we've learned are really important to developers when um, trying to be successful in their day-to-day -day task of you know, developing their microservice code. Um, and to go through these quickly, and, and I'll talk about uh, where Bridge to Kubernetes uh, falls into one of these categories, but um, starting with the local approach, um, the local approach really revolves around, I'm running my code locally and I'm satisfying all those external dependencies on my local development machine. So whether I'm using you know, stubs or mocks to fulfill those external dependencies, or if I'm actually running all of those external dependencies on my development machine and configuring and connecting to them manually, or if I'm even using a system like Docker Compose to uh, run those dependencies and containers, ultimately what this approach does is it allows me to work on my dev machine where everything is running on that workstation. Um, and this has a lot of great benefits as in everything's local, so I get a really speedy developer interloop experience, uh, but it does lack in that, you know, my dev machine is most likely going to be drastically different to the deployed environment where this code is ultimately going to be running in Kubernetes, um, you know, within Azure. Um, so, you know, the extreme of the local approach is moving into this remote approach. And there's, a, there's tools that, uh, basically allow you to write your code on your local machine. Uh, but then when it comes time to debug and test uh, end to end, you take those changes and deploy them and sync them into that deployed environment. So into Kubernetes that might be running in Azure. Um, and this is, you know, this kind of plays off the weakness of, of the local approaches that I get that fidelity to a deployed environment. Um, because I'm testing and debugging where this thing's ultimately going to be running. But now I have these extra steps in my developer interloop cycle of having to build and deploy my code. And I, and I think, you know, working in the space for a little bit, the, or the biggest learning that we've heard from customers with this, uh, specific to this approach is that it does add some extra friction uh, onto a developer's, uh, developer's workflow because now they have to have these uh, operational concepts of how having to bundle their code and build an image of their code and deploy that image into Kubernetes. Um, and what we've learned is that not all developers are accustomed to those sort of concepts and complexities. Yeah. So the last approach, and this is where Bridge to Kubernetes falls in, is the hybrid approach, where it's kind of the best of both worlds, right? Um, you with this, well, ultimately, what this approach allows you to do is write your code on your development workstation, um, but connect to external dependencies that are running in some remote environment. So I'm actually fulfilling all those external dependencies by connecting to my Kubernetes cluster, let's say running in Azure, so that I can leverage the whole end-to-end -end workflow. But the only thing I'm running on my developer workstation is the code that I'm working on. Um, so diving into that approach, this is really where we feel is like the best of both worlds. And we're seeing this resonate with customers uh, quite well. Um, 
So uh, if you're interested, I will show you an example of how this works on using that sample application that we were just talking about. Yeah, I do like demos. <laughs> cool. So uh, at a high level, when you are using Bridge to Kubernetes, uh, like I said, you are only responsible for running uh, the one work, uh, the one microservice on your development workstation. So taking that example that I had earlier, where I have that bikes microservice open here, which is one of these mm -hmm. backend APIs, um, the first thing you would do with Bridge to Kubernetes is create a connection to uh, your cluster. So in this case, I have now had, I've created this bridge um, to my deployed environment. And once this connection has been made, I can actually pick uh, from all the available services running in the cluster, which of these I want to work on locally. And so in this case, since I have bikes open, I would actually select the bikes microservice. So could I pick multiple microservices if I wanted to? Uh, or yeah. one at a time? Nope, you can pick multiple. So you'd have to have different instances of, of VS or VS code open, but this would allow you to redirect multiple at once. Gotcha. Um, so when I select, in this case, the bikes microservice, we're actually putting this redirector in place so that when I make a request that goes into the front end of my application running in AKS, uh, it will continue to hit all the services running in my cluster until that bikes service is called. And at that point, that request will be routed to my development workstation where the version I'm running locally will oh. be executed. That's really cool. So it's kind of like you finished a jigsaw puzzle and you're just kind of sticking in the missing piece once you go to run, test, deploy, all that jazz. Exactly. Nice. Um, so this is at a high level how Bridge to Kubernetes works. Um, and you know, I'd love to show you an example uh, of you know, our Visual Studio experience uh, working on this exact uh, application, how you could go from zero to using Kubernetes on you know, a project that you have of your own. Yeah, let's check it out. The first thing that I want to show you is uh, that application running in AKS. So mm -hmm. this is that bike renting application where, as, as I mentioned before, um, you can log in as a customer, and you can have a, a list of available bikes that you could reserve uh, for a period of time. So in this case, I would see I see the men's cruiser. Um, looks good. I can rent this bike, um, and then when I'm you know done with using this bike, I can return this bike, and it's returned back to the list of available bikes to rent. Um, just really simple application, um, you know, just to, for demo purposes, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so what I want to do is I actually want to work on one of these services. Um, and since I'm going to show you the VS experience, it's uh, probably appropriate that I show you the reservation engine, which is a microservice that is written in .NET Core. Sounds good. Cool. So uh, switching over to VS, um, I have Visual Studio 2019 open. And you'll notice that I have a solution that has one project open. And this is that reservation engine, that microservice that's responsible for actually reserving the bike. Um, and you'll notice that over here, this is just the source code for that uh, microservice. There's no Docker file. Right. There's no Kubernetes configuration. It's just that source mm -hmm. code. So you don't have to sit through opening up the giant project containing all the solutions you don't need, except for the one, right? Right. So it's just that one microservice, nothing else. Cool. Um, and so now, since I have this open, and if I go to the VS Marketplace and I install the Bridge to Kubernetes uh, extension, um, what will happen is I'll have this new launch profile that's available for me to use up in this list of uh, launch profiles uh, that I can select from. And when you select uh, the Bridge to Kubernetes launch profile, the very first time you'll be presented with this dialog that I have open here. And what this dialog really allows you to do is define the connection from your development machine to your target AKS cluster, where you can select that service that you want to redirect to your local running version. Um, so just to quickly walk through you know, what's required here, um, mm -hmm. just to make sense of it all. Uh, so uh, a subscription is required. Um, and within that subscription, I have available a uh, clusters that I could select from. In this case, these are Azure Kubernetes clusters. Um, and then I have a more I have a filter because I have a different namespaces within that cluster. So I'm going to select the namespace uh, that's running this application that I want to start debugging. So I have, my bike app is running in the bike app. My, my bicycle app sir, uh, application is running in the bike app namespace. Mm -hmm. Within this namespace, I have a list of all those services that I saw from that diagram earlier, right? And I want to select one of these that I want to redirect to my locally running version. 
So as I mentioned, I have the reservation engine open. So I'm going to select the reservation engine here. Um, and this next dialog here, the drop down, is uh, basically is asking me to select a launch profile that we want to clone. So uh, this app is a uh, is a launch profile that I'm uh, you know familiar using with this this microservice. And what we'll do is we'll clone this launch profile with some extra configuration that's taken from the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, okay, is that just to make sure that your local content is in sync with the rest of? Yeah, so the reason why we clone is we want to we want to tap into how you're familiar with developing. So if, if I'm used to developing this application, you know, locally, however uh, that may be, with whatever profile that I have set up and configured, we want to allow you to continue using that. Uh, except we'll add some additional configuration into that launch profile uh, that is, you know, from the Kubernetes environment that allows you to talk to those other services. So, so gotcha. it's basically continue doing what you were doing before, but we'll throw in some extra uh, configuration for you to use, uh, you know, to use the bridge to Kubernetes functionality. Neat. Yeah. Um, and these last two, uh, this is actually a really neat feature that we just released. And I'm really excited about. Um, and I don't know if you, you picked up on how we're redirecting traffic to your development machine, but that mm -hmm. can also become problematic when you're working in a shared environment, right? Yeah. So if I have other developers that are working in that same namespace on you know, other microservices mm -hmm. or the same one that I'm working on, potentially we will step on each other's toes because their traffic <laughs> will get sent to my machine and vice yep. versa, right? So <laughs> we have this uh, isolation mode, which allows you to uh, work in isolation where only your requests that are being sent uh, will get redirected to your machine. And we do that by giving you this special URL. In this case, we'll prefix your URL that you're normally using for your application uh, with your username on your machine and then this unique hash here. So that only traffic that's using this URL mm -hmm. will go to get sent to your local running version where the normal URL that everyone else would be using uh, will continue to run and, and hit the service that's running in the cluster. That's really cool. So ultimately, uh, there might reach a point, of course, when you do need to like push changes and things, right? So you're still gonna have to fix merge conflicts in that context, right? But as right. far as running and testing with the Kubernetes cluster, it's not gonna be an issue and you're not gonna bump into somebody else who's also trying to access the same cluster at the same time. Right, so if I was working in a shared namespace, uh, you can imagine that if uh, my, my friend John was using uh, the same namespace and working on a different microservice, he would have his own special URL and I would have my own special URL so that our traffic isn't uh, conflicting with each other, that only my traffic is getting redirected to my machine and his traffic is getting redirected to his machine. Great. Yeah. If only all traffic was like that. <laughs> <laughs> so so at, at this point, um, I have this configured. And like I mentioned before, this is a one-time configuration that you would set up when you're getting started with the bridge to Kubernetes. Uh, we persist this. You can always go back and change it later. Uh, but for this case, I'm happy with it. So I will hit OK. Um, so we'll check to make sure that we can actually isolate that service and we can redirect it to your local running version. Um, so this usually takes just a couple seconds. Cool, and that's done. That check passed. So now, if I want to, you know, start working on this service and hit some breakpoints, um, let's do that. So I'm going to open up a file here. Uh, this is the bikehelper.cs, um, and since I'm debugging the reservation engine microservice, so when you reserve a bike, uh, this is the the service that will get executed. Um, I can actually put a breakpoint, and let's let's put it in this reserve bike method. That seems appropriate for this for this service here. Mm -hmm. Um, and then since I'm s targeting that bridge to Kubernetes uh, launch profile, I can F5. And what it's doing is going back to that diagram that I showed you before is at this point, it's creating that bridge between my developer workstation and that Kubernetes cluster. Um, we do, we do uh, require admin privileges on the client machine to, to allow that traffic to be sent back and forth. Uh, so that is one dependency that uh, developers will have to have um, when working with Bridge to Kubernetes. Gotcha. So at this point, what it's doing is it's it's establishing that connection. It's finding that service in the cluster that I want to redirect to my machine. And what it's doing is when it finds that service, it's putting that redirector in place, and then it's going to make it so that any request that hit that service will actually get sent to my machine. Um, so I just got my UAC prompt, so I authorized that. Great. All right. 
So it looks like that connection has been made. Um, it's starting my debug session here. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, that URL, that special URL that I had in that dialogue, when my debug session was started, it actually launched that URL. So here I am with my application. And you can see I have that special URL that I had uh, that was provided to me when I clicked I wanted to work in isolation. So um, at this point, I can try to debug uh, my service in an end-to-end -end scenario. So uh, I'm actually hitting the services that are running in AKS at this point. So this is the front end that we'll call the user microservice. There we go. And now that uh, I have a list of bikes to choose from, I can select a bike. And again, all this traffic is still happening within the cluster. Nothing's being redirected to my machine yet. But now, when I'm actually going to reserve a bike, and it's going to actually send a request to that reservation engine microservice, right. you'll notice that that request will get sent to my VS instance. You see VS just popped open, and I'm now I'm stuck at my breakpoint where I can debug, uh, you know, and step through the code, and you know, however my debugging practices, you know, I'm I'm open to using whatever debugging practices that I'm familiar with, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So it's essentially skipping over the existing microservice that's up in the cluster and just redirecting to your local. Right, your exactly. So, and, and this is right. So I can iterate on my code. I can make changes. I can debug you know, maybe these potential issues. Uh, and then again, I'm, the only thing here that I want to call out that is, you know, for me, is the most exciting thing about this feature is that I'm only running that one microservice. I don't have all these other yeah. all these other services. I'm leveraging them from running in that Kubernetes environment. Mm -hmm. um, and again, no Docker files, no Helm charts or Kubernetes artifacts. Uh, I'm running this natively on my dev machine. Um, yeah. That's so cool. I mean, even locally sometimes when trying to look at a huge project, but you only need a chunk of it. It's just like, I'm spending all this time debugging this other issue that's not even my responsibility. Yeah, trying and, to get all that hooked up. Right. And, yeah, and all these other dependencies. Yeah. So that's cool that you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah. So um, so at, at this point, you know, as a developer, I, I'd step through this code and when I'm happy with it, I can hit resume and that request will get sent back into the cluster to be completed. Um, and the really nice thing about this is that, you know, if let's say I actually make a change as, as a configuration change that I would need to restart my debug session. So if I was to exit my debug session here, you'll notice that I'm no longer in that debugging mode, but I have this yellow banner up here, this info bar that says, hey, your service reservation engine is still being redirected to your machine. Sweet. So when I so I can make a yeah, I can make a configuration change and you know I'm ready to F5 again. And what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna skip that connection yeah. to, uh, what we went through initially. Yeah. Right, yeah, because we're we're already connected. So uh, yep. there I am, my application launches and I can you know iterate on my code as I as I would. That's great. It's almost like it got cached someplace until you need to use it again while you're in the same VS session, right? Right. So yeah, that is uh, the Visual Studio experience for Bridge to Kubernetes. That's really exciting. I think that could save people a lot of frustration. <laughs> so based off of that, um, are there any existing limitations that you want to tell viewers about? Um, so base limitations, well, we're working really hard to uh, unblock any limitations. So we, yeah. you know, we're, we're working with developers or understanding the, the applications that they're developing and, you know, where, Cooper, where Bridge to Kubernetes uh, fits um, and really just kind of understanding the different scenarios that we need to support. Um, I would say the one thing that we get uh, asked constantly that I'm really excited to announce is that people want to use uh, Bridge to Kubernetes on uh, Kubernetes clusters that are not uh, AKS clusters. So uh, a, a mini cube uh, cluster where it's basically running your Kubernetes cluster on your development machine. Mm -hmm. um, and we are uh, in the process of actually enabling a public preview that would allow you to work uh, to use Bridge to Kubernetes on any Kubernetes platform. So wow. uh, that's a really exciting announcement um, that you know, will happen in the very near future. <laughs> that is really cool. And speaking of previews, how can people access this tool? Is it available yet? Yeah, so uh, we recently just went GA. Uh, so that's really exciting. Congratulations. 
Thank you. Um, I have uh, some, there's some quick starts under the VS Code documentation under the develop with Kubernetes. Um, and uh, we also have some getting started material under the VS uh, Visual Studio Container Tools documentation um, that I will absolutely provide uh, some information on how to get started with those. That is fantastic. And so you already mentioned that you're working to expand bridge to Kubernetes functionality out to all um, Kubernetes platforms. So what else is next for, uh, for Kubernetes? Uh, so I think, you know, again, it's really understanding uh, what, the scenarios that different development teams have to use. So um, actually one limitation um, that uh, potentially when uh, people are watching this video will no longer be a limitation uh, is that it does uh, is only targeting Linux uh, Linux containers uh, in Kubernetes. And we've heard that there are a lot of uh, development teams that are in this hybrid scenario where they're running Windows containers as well as Linux containers. So um, we want to make sure that we, uh, you know, cater our tools to to all different situations. So we're really working through, um, and, you know, having this ability to work and target uh, any Windows containers. That is very exciting. Well, thanks for sharing that. That is a really cool tool that I think can help a lot of people out. I really like that you can just segment <laughs> the the microservice that you need and don't have exactly. to worry about anything else seriously. Right, just focus on the business logic yeah. of the microservice. How much time, right? Like yeah. how much time gets wasted just trying to figure out how another chunk that's not really your problem connects to the piece you're working on. So exactly. <laughs> super exciting. Yep. Well, so thank you. yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks for being here, Nick. And yep. uh, yeah, and so go try it out. It's GA now officially. Yeah, we want to know what you, what you think. So uh, we'll provide some information on how you can uh, uh, get in touch with our team. And we want to hear about your experiences with Bridge to Kubernetes. So absolutely reach out. Awesome. Cool. So until, yeah. So until next time, happy coding.